a superpower addicted to spying. And now it's coming for us. Why China wants your secrets. Our investigation starts now. Good evening, I'm Liz Hayes, and this is Under Investigation. Tonight, how your personal data is becoming China's state property. They'll buy it, they'll borrow it, they'll build it, or they'll steal it. With our three intelligence experts... We have never seen an authoritarian government that is technologically powered like China is. We investigate the spy nation. We are facing an authoritarian regime that can reach right into our bedrooms. The lengths to which China will go to grab your information. Look at what those privacy settings give your app access to. With every move you make, every step you take. The stuff that spies of the 20th century could only dream of. And the ultimate cyber threat, AI. AI is like a weapon. A terrorist can use it or a soldier on our side can use it. President Xi Jinping has made it clear he wants China to lead the world. In that ambition, Knowledge is power. And much of that knowledge comes from spying. The United States government is tracking a high altitude surveillance balloon. Allegations that it infiltrated a Tory parliamentary pressure group. China is infamous for the vast scale of its espionage activities. There have been evidence-based attacks on critical infrastructure, and the origin of those attacks has been the Chinese government. But it's now about all of our secrets, yours and mine. What we do, where we go, what we think. The data of our personal lives. In a given year now, we collect and produce more data than for nearly all of human history before it. From passwords to love letters, credit cards and photographs, each of us carries our deepest secrets in our pockets. You just now can tap into people's phones and that is an incredibly powerful uh, point of access. Your phone is a surveillance device that you willingly carry in your pocket every day. It's got apps all over it, all of which is collecting data about you, where you are, who you're talking to, what you're buying. It's an incredibly rich surveillance device targeted at individual citizens. And our data gives China extraordinary information about us, giving it the ability to infiltrate our lives through social media news feeds. In the next 20 years, maybe sooner, China will become the dominant economic world power. Enabling it to manipulate how we think. For cooperation and partnerships. And, many and what we believe. Why do the rules apply to China, but not the rest of the world? Data ultimately gives China control. And it already does that in its own country through its intense monitoring that collates very individual information of its people. China is a huge country. The most sophisticated cities, the largest cities, places like Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, these places are incredibly wired. They're some of the most surveilled places on Earth, reminding people, hey, the, the government is here and you better get into line. Joining our investigation tonight, Paul Mosher, global technology correspondent for The New York Times. He recently lived in China and was an eyewitness to the Chinese government's Big Brother surveillance. I counted on my commute in Shanghai, which was about 20 minutes, 200 some odd cameras that I passed on the way. You have almost complete vision into the sort of street level 
activity of people and it's just a matter of what you want to find and who you want to see and who you want to track. The earliest notice that we found that the government trying to buy this kind of technology was from 2015. Mui Zhao is also with the New York Times investigation team, which exposed China's plans for its vast spying networks. She analyzed papers that revealed domestic surveillance on a massive scale. We found that all regions and provinces across China now have this kind of technology. On public streets, in city after city, province after province, you'll find a vast network of interconnected surveillance technology, including disguised microphones that can record your unique voice print, even from a distance of 100 metres. And cameras equipped with facial recognition software feeding into an ever-growing database. The camera that's at your face level will identify who you are. We'll say, this is Paul Mosier. Uh, we know he's a journalist. We know he lives nearby. He's walking down the street. Now, it will also say he's wearing a black shirt, and his hair is kind of short and brown, and he has blue eyes, and he has a large nose. And then when you get to the next intersection and the next facial camera, it'll look again and confirm that it's you. And then just, you know, whenever they want to, click a button, and you see a map, and you see where Paul has gone today and it kind of is passively doing the work that you used to need a full police surveillance team to do. China has even built and placed on streets what appear to be thousands of mobile phone towers. But they are not. Instead, they're more secret surveillance systems. The way your phone works, to connect to the closest cell tower, your phone has a sort of built-in software that you, you can't really edit, that you don't modify, that is just constantly searching for the nearest signals. And so what they do is they build what are equivalent to sort of fake cell towers all over the city, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these things. And so as your phone is looking for the real cell tower, it will see the fake one, shake hands with the fake one and say, hey. But in that handshaking, some data is exchanged and that data tells them a couple of different numbers that help them to identify your phone number. So in just two steps, you have every single person's phone number and, and where they are, and that gives you their identity. We're seeing that they're also buying software that can help them connect the data assemble this kind of very comprehensive personal profiles that include someone's facial information, someone's phone identification, someone's car play, someone's clothing features, and your social network. New York Times investigators found that China's databases carry a menu list of identifying features of individual citizens. Key attributes, which can then be filtered in the way that you would use a drop-down menu in any kind of program or system. And it will marry your health records or your criminal past or, mm -hmm. or just your um, views, it becomes potentially. Your, your online profile. And in China, everyone knows the government is always watching and waiting to pounce. <laughs> If there's a, a dissident or a person causing problems, what they'll usually do is just install a camera outside their house. So you get your own personal surveillance camera. So it's all about layering different data sets and data sources together. What takes China's surveillance technology to the next level is its ability to process all the many layers of data it collects to create incredibly detailed profiles of individuals. They're looking at different types of personal data and putting them together in the same database and using algorithms to really find the people they want to target. And as we'll show later in our investigation, that's what we should expect China can also do with our data. I think we should be thinking really carefully and really clear-eyed about the potential threat that is there and also the differences between a democracy that collects and uses data and an authoritarian government that is data addicted and that has a habit not just of controlling and surveilling its own people, 
but also people around the world. That is hair raising, John. Absolutely, it's, it's definitely hair raising and we haven't quite got our heads around what that means. A stark illustration of China's ability to monitor and control its people is in the northwest of the country. In the province of Xinjiang, home to the Uyghurs, 12 million people, nearly all of whom are Muslims. If you are talking about the ultimate deployment of highly invasive surveillance technology in China, I would say Xinjiang is definitely um, the first place in China that really has all these technologies being used in one spot. If you're a Uyghur, nothing is private. I think it's fair to say that the Chinese Communist Party has been using uh, the Uyghur uh, issue as a test bed for a lot of this technological control. It's believed nearly a million and a half Uyghurs are jailed in so-called re-education camps. But it seems the entire province of Xinjiang is a state-controlled digital prison. It shows you that, you know, some of these technologies combined with the authoritarian powers, you know, can really be used to turn anything into a jail cell. The Uyghur population is oppressed in multiple ways. This data surveillance and oppression is one of them. Of course, there's a lot of physical internment and suppression as well. And China has married those up seamlessly. Coming up, for a government like China, they operate on a hoover everything up now, figure out how to use it later basis. It's the largest hack. Sensitive health data. When our private data. Compromising up to 9 million Australians. Isn't private at all. We are facing an authoritarian regime that can reach right into our kids' rooms and into our lounge room. And that's concerning for Australians. That's next on Under Investigation. Our investigation tonight has revealed China is spying on virtually its entire population, analysing personal data in ways it could also use against the rest of the world, including Australia. It's stuff that spies of the 20th century could only dream of. Every way it can, China is gathering our personal data. Australian Cyber Security Centre recently identified a malicious intrusion into the Australian Parliament House computer network. For a government like China, they operate on a hoover everything up now, figure out how to use it later basis. And that's concerning for Australians. In less than a single year, hackers from around the world stole the personal data of millions of Australians. The data breach of Australia's second largest telco. In September 2022, Optus. Compromising up to 9 million Australians. October 2022, Medibank. The hackers had accessed sensitive health data of all 4 million of its customers. March 2023, Latitude Financial. It's the largest hack of a financial institution in Australian history. And no matter who's responsible, China can still get its hands on our data, either through the dark web or from its own hacking network. And according to our experts, it has the technology to combine all that data into highly detailed individual profiles. It's not just one database, it's all of the databases linked together which create a picture that is so much greater, the sum is so much greater than its parts. But often what China knows about us is information we make little effort to hide. Most of us willingly, if sometimes unwittingly, hand over precious personal data every day of our online lives. But how many of us realise we could be handing it straight to an authoritarian regime whose leader knows the best way to control a population 
is to know everything about it. This is unprecedented. We have faced authoritarian regimes before, and we've been able to deal with them because they've been at arm's length. But now we are facing an authoritarian regime that can reach right into our bedrooms, into our kids' rooms, and into our lounge room. And we don't know how to handle that. Our social media apps, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And dating apps like Bumble and Tinder are direct windows into our closest held secrets. Windows that can also open doors to the Chinese government's online spying network. You know, we have an approach in Australia, and I hear it from my own kids, how I've got nothing to hide, it's all right. Well, I'm sorry, there are things you do want to hide because there are malevolent actors, and there's a lot of them. Some of our information we choose to reveal to the public. Some of it we think is private. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg has apologised after 50 million users had their personal information exploited. This was a major breach of trust, and, and I'm really sorry that this happened. The reality is, much of our private data isn't private at all. After multiple massive data breaches, the private records of tens of millions of people are often placed online for anyone to access, including China's cyber spies. This is what happens when you think that it doesn't matter um, if people have all my information. Actually, it does matter. It matters enormously. But for many, it's hard to understand why China wants our personal data. Head to head, I would rather China get my data than Mark Zuckerberg. I don't care. Snap. I don't care. What are you going to do with it? Look at it, giggle a little, maybe get a little crush on me, have it. Authoritarian governments in particular are interested in your data because that gives them a range of different things they can do with it. One effective way China targets us personally is through our social media apps and networks to push its own propaganda. It can influence our news feeds, the posts we receive and click on. In August last year, Meta shut down thousands of Facebook and Instagram accounts that were part of a Chinese political spam network it dubbed Spamiflage. A Chinese disinformation campaign it calls part of the largest known cross-platform covert influence operation in the world. We are examining facts. I am not... Facebook, Instagram and many other social media apps were flooded with pro-China posts from the Spamiflage network. It's all designed to influence the decisions we make, from what we buy to even how we vote, to ensure those decisions are in China's best interests. There's so much data out there, but with the clever algorithms, you can actually be very uh, selective about what you extract, and you can very carefully target who you want to and particular aspects of a person's profile to be used uh, really against them. China targets audiences on topics particularly where it feels deep criticism, like China's oppression of its Uyghur minority. This is a fictitious figure and a fictitious situation. By using influencers who spruik the Communist Party line. They're trying to portray China in the most negative way possible. I'll bring ASPE and Western propaganda to account for the damage they've caused. The Chinese government sees the internet as a form of information projection and propaganda. And so there is a massive bureaucracy with tens of thousands of people, uh, huge amounts of software dedicated to controlling what is said on the internet, deleting the things that they don't want said. But there's one social media app developed in China which is able to directly shape what we can and can't see. It's the trending video app popular with one billion people around the world. On TikTok, the idea space is being shaped in a way we have not yet quite grappled with. With over a billion users worldwide and nearly a third of all Australians using the app, it's a potent influencer for China. 
So from a TikTok point of view, you don't know what you're not seeing. Former National Security Officer Alex Capel says TikTok is already manipulating freedom of information. To search up what's happening in China, how they're getting concentration camps, throwing innocent Muslims in there. TikTok reportedly has a detection tool, tracking a list of sensitive words, with some labelled as prohibited, including criticism of the communist government, its leaders, Taiwan and Hong Kong independence, and Tiananmen Square. TikTok denies using these banned words to censor posts, but we know its Chinese owner, ByteDance, definitely uses such lists. There's a lot of content that gets posted on TikTok that is essentially shadow banned by TikTok moderators where they'll say, we're not going to really let people see LGBTI content. We're not going to let them see particular posts that might range around political issues like Hong Kong or Taiwan. You might be able to post it. You might think that it's up there, but it's demoted in terms of the search rankings and it's really kind of that material is often suppressed mm. on that platform. So it's misinformation, disinformation, and uh, well, a censorship, basically, yep. you're yep. talking about. Absolutely. And so we don't see that. You don't see that because it's an opaque, highly advanced AI-driven platform that is essentially steering you down a particular path. And the algorithm that sits behind something like a TikTok is not neutral. If you're a company like TikTok, to some degree, you do have power to kind of control what people see. And in turn, if you control enough of what people see, you start to control how they think about the world. Many Western countries, including Australia, have banned TikTok from government devices considered beholden to the Chinese regime. TikTok is the spy in Americans' pockets. It's a claim TikTok strongly rejects. I have seen no evidence that the Chinese government has access to that data. They have never asked us, we have not provided. And only last week, US lawmakers demanded TikTok sever all links with China's Communist Party. The ruling authority, the Chinese Communist Party, and its leader, Xi Jinping, have their hands deep in the inner workings of the company with devastating consequences for our own personal freedoms. The threat is this, do we want to live in a society where some of the platforms that animate our democracy, that power our economy, that underwrite our social interactions, is ultimately able to be controlled by the Chinese Communist Party? Coming up... China told us back in the 1990s that it wanted to control the internet, and we laughed it off. Not just online, the world around us is increasingly constructed by technologies that are controlled by China. At work and in our homes. We have seen instances of retribution. How China can see us no matter where we are. China is trying to outplay, outmatch, outlast in a way that I don't think we've quite got our heads around yet. That's next on Under Investigation. Cybersecurity is the fastest changing national security threat that our country faces. Tonight, we're investigating a major threat to Australia, to our way of life, to ourselves. The threat is this. Do we want to live in a society where some of the platforms that animate our democracy is ultimately able to be controlled by the Chinese Communist Party? Not a war, but a cyber invasion of influence and control. There is a massive bureaucracy with tens of thousands of people, huge amounts of software dedicated to controlling what is said on the internet, deleting the things that they don't want said. And if you control enough of what people see, you start to control how they think about the world. As we've revealed, China's ambition to control what's said or censored on the internet can be seen with its campaign of influence on Western social media apps and the manipulation of the hugely successful Chinese app TikTok. Its control China already has over its domestic internet, using what it calls the Great Firewall. China told us back in the 1990s that it wanted to control the internet. 
that it wanted to build the Great Firewall and use the internet both to surveil its domestic population and to insulate them from Western liberal democratic views. And we laughed it off. Bill Clinton, then the president, in the early 2000s was asked, what about this great firewall thing that China is building? And he laughed. Now there's no question China has been trying to crack down on the internet. Good luck. That's sort of like trying to nail jello to the wall. Bill Clinton with this moment of hubris, of you know, kind of too much pride, thinking that we're unstoppable, we're unbeatable. China is trying to outplay, outmatch, outlast in a way that uh, I don't think we've quite got our heads around yet. Western democracies allow Chinese apps like WeChat and TikTok to operate freely amongst the general public. But Western social media apps are blocked in China. So we allow that. WeChat can operate here, but uh, Western systems like Facebook and Twitter can't operate in China because of the Great Firewall. That makes it a completely uneven playing field. So China can influence out, uh, it, can in, it, it can interfere, it can manipulate, uh, it can exert influence and control, but it doesn't allow the reverse. Even the app it created, TikTok, is outlawed in China. In its place is a local version called Duan, which is heavily censored and bans a long list of topics, such as the Tiananmen Square massacre, Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests, and any mention of Uyghur oppression in Xinjiang. So we were arrogant. We thought America created the internet, so we'll always represent liberal democratic values and we'll control it. And that's not the world we live in now. And China's online oppression is now reaching well beyond its borders. Up until about 10, 15 years ago, we saw things like surveillance in China and Chinese oppression of its own populace as being something that was strictly domestic. Now I think it's become very, very clear that that's not actually the way that China conceives of stability. According to cybersecurity expert Dr Alex Caples, China's idea of stability includes silencing and punishing critics wherever they might be. And it uses the internet to find them tracking down critics on the messaging app WeChat, often used by Chinese people living in the West. We have seen instances of retribution against individuals who have used WeChat outside the geographic boundaries of China, who have then had family members affected inside, whether they've been harassed, interned, whatever that is. Mm. Um, and that is a way of being able to extend that social control beyond the geographic border. We've revealed how China can spy on us online. But there's also an acknowledged threat from Chinese technology, including consumer products purchased in their millions by Australians, like security cameras and drones. The world around us that we live in now is increasingly constructed by technologies that are increasingly controlled by China or where China is exploiting the vulnerabilities to hack them, to take our data, to manipulate them. And I just don't think we've really recognised that that's the world we're living in. Chinese drones, mainly those made by Da Zhang Innovations or DJI, are ubiquitous in Australia, at home, in business, and government. The company behind them has deep ties to the Chinese Communist Party, and it's believed their drones are being used to track and surveil the Uyghur population. In Australia, it's feared the same drones, equipped with cameras and advanced sensors, could be collecting our personal data, including facial recognition information. The thing about China that really makes it stand out is just the lack of insight from regular people into these systems and the lack of transparency for them. This is not a democracy. This is the world's most powerful and largest authoritarian country. 
Under Chinese law, the Communist Party can access data and video collected by any DJI drone as well as information from Chinese security cameras like Hikvision and Dawa. All Chinese companies under kind of Chinese intelligence and security laws are essentially bound to pursue their economic objectives alongside national security objectives. So for a Hikvision or any of the sorts of Chinese companies that are operating out here in the Western world and are selling to Western consumers, they nonetheless are bound under those Chinese legislative instruments to support the objectives of the CCP. In February last year, the Defence Minister ordered Hikvision and Dawa cameras to be removed from sensitive government buildings. It is right to be focused on it. We do need to be thinking about the security uh, of our defence estate. And so we're going through the process to remove what cameras exist. There are also moves to stop government departments using an estimated 3,000 Chinese DJI drones. But these drones and cameras are still being used in institutions, companies and homes across Australia, potentially gathering data on us all. I thought it was really interesting when the government made the decision to rip uh, Chinese manufactured surveillance cameras out of government property, but were pretty silent on where they saw risk and where they saw threat. And the problem with that is, if we think about most of our critical infrastructure in Australia, the electricity grids, the hospitals, the transport networks that make our economy tick, most of that isn't government property. It sits in the private sector. So if there are risks from surveillance and from potentially vulnerable devices in government property, those risks will be elsewhere. John, what are Australians supposed to make of this? Well, we are in a conundrum because we are trying to reconcile two very different polar opposites where we are dependent on trade with China. Security specialist John Blaxland says Australia is in a double bind, having to delicately dance with a financial friend who is also a spying foe. We have a difficult situation between what emerges as a far darker, more authoritarian China under President Xi than we had hoped would emerge. We are kind of in a race and we have been maybe playing the tortoise versus the hare. We, we have not been aware of the gravity or the scale of the challenge. Yes, you say we're in denial. We are in denial, yeah. Coming up... AI is like a weapon. A terrorist can use it or a soldier on our side can use it. The AI revolution. AI means you can analyse more data and make sense of it just faster than a human brain can. That could change every aspect of our lives. Is China doing this now? Yes, there is evidence that China is using AI to influence and coerce foreign citizens and societies. That's next on Under Investigation. In a given year now, we collect and produce more data than for nearly all of human history before it. And it's not just the availability of data, it's the fact we now have the tools to process that data. What China can do with our personal data right now is deeply concerning. But what it will be able to do in the near future is terrifying. China is trying to outplay, outmatch, outlast in a way that I don't think we've quite got our heads around yet. China is a world leader in AI, artificial intelligence, the coming revolution that we're being warned could change every aspect of our lives. In the hands of an authoritarian China, AI could be used to weaponize our personal data. Is AI the game changer? Many seem to think so. Step inside the AI world and the possibilities become all too clear. China can use AI to analyze the vast swathes of data it collects from its own citizens and from us. 
according to cyber intelligence expert Catherine Manston. When you're dealing with an authoritarian country in a digitalized world where it's not just the Chinese government thinking about the Chinese people and Chinese citizens, they're able to reach into Australia. They're able to surveil Australian citizens. That's where we start to potentially have a problem. AI means you can do all of that at bigger scale, you can do it faster, you can collect, you can analyse more data, and it makes sense of it just faster than a human brain can. So tonight, we're using AI, Google's chatbot called Gemini, to investigate China. What type of specific personal data? While search engines like Google rely on key words, AI Gemini digs far deeper into the internet name, phone numbers, email addresses. Essentially focusing and collating all available knowledge to provide single, simple answers. And social media posts and your travel plans, which can be used to monitor you. How does China collect personal data? Gemini says China buys our personal data and even steals it using fake apps. Chinese state-owned companies purchase your data from Western social media platforms. They create disguised apps to collect your data without your knowledge or consent. Unfortunately, criminals, nation states, they use apps because they've got the keys to our digital kingdom and they've got access to a lot of different information to pull that on us. Yeah, well, AI is telling us itself. Yeah. It's <laughs> revealing its secrets. <laughs> And it doesn't end there. How could China employ AI to influence or... AI Gemini spells out just how our information can be used against us and our societies. To target you with personalized Chinese propaganda and disinformation, to launch cyber attacks against Western targets and individuals, social media manipulation to sow discord and division and undermine trust in institutions, and to monitor and track individuals considered a threat to China's national security. It's an unsettling revelation. So discord, uh, division, undermine trust. Uh, I can see what's happening here is creating chaos, isn't it? It's, it's the ability to make nothing truthful again. No, there is no such thing as truth. Yes, yeah, so the researchers call this the fire hose of falsehood. You just spew as much rubbish out there that people will be so be bewildered that they don't know what to believe anymore, which is possibly the most dangerous thing that we could have in a democracy or indeed an economy. Is China doing this now? Yes, there is evidence that China is using AI to influence and coerce foreign citizens and societies. And we've already seen it happen in Australia. Incendiary posts from fake social media accounts linked to China and potentially created by AI seeking to create suspicion and division was seen in last year's Voice to Parliament debate. Today I announce that referendum day will be the 14th of October. At the time, national security expert Dr Alex Caples and her team at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute discovered China was actively infiltrating social media, using misinformation to influence and engineer chaos during the voice referendum. There's a range of kind of hostile activity that social engineering can beget. Social engineering is essentially using the things that, you know, a malicious actor might know, things they know that you're likely to click on. And once that's been exploited, everyone in your network is potentially exploited and it just gets a life of its own. Our cybersecurity specialists agree the next big threat from China is AI. AI is like a, like a weapon. A terrorist can use it or a soldier on our side can use it. I think there's a challenge for us the connections between computers and the network, and the network of networks that's emerged in the last 20, 25 years that has transformed our lives, that's made it much more connected, super enabling, super exciting, but it's also put us in this space where we're all extremely vulnerable. At its most dangerous, China could use AI and the personal data it's collected to compromise Australian citizens. Catherine, on a personal level, what's the worst case scenario? Suddenly, you've got 
all of this information that makes you very blackmailable or controllable, right? So this could be information about your health conditions, your financial situation, stuff that you've disclosed to the government as your employer, but you don't want anyone else to know. That's the personal tax. Of course, there's also dissidents and journalists and human rights activists. There's a real human rights issue at stake there for any of those people whose data has been stolen. Coming up... Foreign interference and espionage have outstripped terrorism and are now our principal security challenges. How to protect your data. We're all hooked on the great apps on our phones, but it's put us in the space where we're all extremely vulnerable. And yourself. Recognise that your data matters. It's valuable and that'll help us with everything. That's next on Under Investigation. Tonight, we've investigated the new threat to our personal data. Our experts have exposed China's insatiable appetite for information. It already collects the most intimate details about its own people. And so what they do is they build what are equivalent to sort of fake cell towers all over the city, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these things. And we've shown that now China wants ours. So suddenly you've got all of this information that makes you very blackmailable or controllable. We've revealed it's information China can weaponize against us using artificial intelligence. AI is like a weapon. A terrorist can use it or a soldier on our side can use it. And that's according to AI. There is evidence that China is using AI to influence and coerce foreign citizens and societies. It leaves us to ask, how can we protect ourselves and our country? It's important for the national security of our country uh, that we're transparent and upfront with Australians about the threats that we face. The Australian government is now speaking more openly about the cyber threat from China. There have been um, evidence-based attacks on critical infrastructure and the origin of those attacks has been um, the Chinese government. Is it an overstatement to say it's kind of like a silent invasion? I think it's worth pointing out the Australian government's been really clear with the Australian people that foreign interference and espionage have outstripped terrorism and are now our principal security challenges. We're all hooked on the great apps on our phones, but it's also put us in this space where we're all extremely vulnerable. Other countries, and in particular, our close allies, are also sounding the alarm. And they want us all to know, guarding our personal data is in our national interest. It's not simply like, oh, you know, I have nothing to hide, why, why should I care? And it's not, oh, you know, everything's already spied upon, so it doesn't matter, the, 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 you know, the cow's out of the barn. The point is, if you live in a democracy and you care about the future of that, that democracy, you need controls and you need checks on this stuff because in the long run, it can be weaponized so powerfully and abused in such ways that, that it will threaten at some point your system. And it may not be now, it may not be tomorrow, it may be in 25 years, but the point is you have to start somewhere and that, that, that somewhere is right here and right now. So right now, this is what you can do to protect your personal data. It's all about limiting the permissions you give apps on your phone. Sharing your location allows your movements to be tracked. Enabling your microphone allows your voice to be recorded. Apps could be disguised spyware, so don't download unless you're sure. Don't accept cookies. You're giving up personal details for no good reason. Be careful of free public Wi-Fi networks. Anyone can set one up and intercept everything you do while you're connected. And use different passwords for all your apps, so if one is breached, the others remain secure. I think really it's about... According to our experts, these are the basic steps that everyone should follow. Look at what those privacy settings give your app access to. 
See what you can live with and live without. Have a think about, you know, how much information you're actually volunteering online, whether or not it's really relevant or necessary. Catherine. I would say recognise that your data matters. It's valuable and everyone else in the world recognises that companies, platforms, authoritarian governments, our own government knows the value of your individual data, so you should value that as well. And that'll, that'll help us with everything from avoiding scams and criminals online right through to some of the pointy end of foreign nation state disinformation and propaganda as well. We end tonight at what could well be a turning point in human civilization, where digital supremacy means real world power. We've shown how China does it and why Australia and Australians must take note. From our national cyber borders to our personal apps. The more China knows about us, the more it can disrupt and divide our society and our democracy. We have to all take responsibility. We've reached that point, is that not true? We can no longer say we didn't know. We've exactly reached right. that point. I think it's important for us to have our eyes open. We need to not be afraid, but be alert and not alarmed. It is incumbent on all of us to stay informed and vigilant about our digital security. And for a more detailed privacy checklist, please go to our website. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. And I thank you. I'm Liz Hayes. Good night. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes and thank you for watching Under Investigation. Subscribe to our channel now for exclusive clips and don't miss out on full episodes of Under Investigation on Nine Now and the Nine Now app.